This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about sample quiz number three for statics, CE 2301. We're going to look at a couple of uh, trusses and solve one by the joint method of joints and the other by the method of sections. We start off with uh, this truss here, which is a got four joints. A, B, C, D with this geometry here. The first question is draw a free body diagram of joint C, which is this point over here, this pin. Okay, we have member FBC, FCD, and the 600 pound applied force. Now, what I always like to do is assume all my forces in tension, forces in members. Just true, that's joint C. So I've shown everything with the arrows pointing away from the joint because remember the forces in the uh, members of the truss are really what force are the, in what direction is that force being exerted on the joint. So if that if FBC is in tension, it's pulling away from joint C. Same thing with FCD. Assume your uh, force is in tension and then let the signs of your answers tell you whether or not you were right or not. Okay, question number two was what's the force in BC, member BC, which is this sloping up member there. Remember using the method of joints, all I can do is I have to look for a joint with two unknowns because all I've got is my sum of forces in X and Y direction to work with. So I'm going to assume force, let's do a summation of force in the y direction, that's equal to zero, because that eliminates the force in FCD. And all I have is the negative 600 pounds, I have assumed positive up, negative 600 pounds from the applied force, plus, because it's in the up direction, the three-fifths component of member FBC. I rearrange my equation. I can solve for FBC is equal to positive 600 times 5 thirds or 1,000 pounds tension. So my assumption of tension was correct because the answer came out to be positive. Problem number three is find the force in the member CD going back to joint C. Now I can sum forces in the X direction assuming positive to the right, that's equal to zero. I have negative FCD because it goes to the left minus, because it also goes to the left, the four-fifths component of FBC, which I now know is a thousand pounds. So I can rearrange this equation, FCD is equal to, I take that to the other side of the equal sign, negative four-fifths of a thousand pounds. So that's negative 800 pounds so I would erase my negative sign and I would write compression. If I was going to keep on solving this truss, I would change my the sign of my FCD to be compression or pushing on the joint and I would erase it as being a tension force so that I can remember that it is a compressive force. Also I would start writing my forces on my truss I would write that like a thousand pounds and so forth. Tension. Method of joints, you got to keep track of all those forces as you go through the truss and solve for all the members. For this test, we're just going to solve a few joints. Next one is to draw, number, problem number four is draw a free body diagram of joint B, which looks like this. I did not mention up here, but of course this is a 3-4-5 angle. It's 20 in the horizontal, 15 in the vertical, so it's a 3-4-5. I like to draw those angle relationships when I know them on my free body, but that's optional. So I have the force in member AB, the force in member BD, and the force in member BC, which I now know, plus my applied force of 400 pounds to the left. So that's a good free body diagram. Now I want to know in problem number five, what's the force in AB? Well, 
I can, uh, the only unknown that I have in, a, in the X direction is the force in AB. I can eliminate FBD because it's pure vertical or Y force. So I just say the sum of forces in the X direction positive to the right is equal to zero. That's negative four-fifths FAB. It's the four-fifths component horizontal FAB pulling tension to the right, to the left, excuse me, minus 400 pounds applied force plus four-fifths of the force in BC, which is a thousand pounds, I know from up here, and it's pulling to the right, so it's positive. So, rearranging this equation a little bit, I can take this negative four-fifths FAB to the other side of the equal sign and get four-fifths FAB is equal to minus 400 pounds plus four-fifths of a thousand pounds. Continuing to <coughs> combine terms, I can say FAB, the force in FAB, is equal to five-fourths, where I've taken that and inverted it, multiplied it by negative 400 plus four-fifths of a thousand or 800, which means equals five-fourths of 400 pounds, keeping religious track of my positives and negatives. That's equal to 500 pounds tension. So if I was going to continue solving it, I would write that on my uh, big diagram. So that solves the first truss by the method of joints, a few of the forces, most of them. Now the second page on that sample quiz has a truss that looks like this. It's kind of like a cantilevered truss. And we're supposed to solve this by the method of sections. I have 2.4 meters vertical five panels at one meter apiece. These applied forces of three kilonewtons plus this one down here. Question number six was draw a free body diagram of the section that I would cut to get the forces in members BC, CI, and IJ. Well that's going to look like this. It's going to be a section right through there. And here's my free body diagram showing just the part to the left. Remember that for a section method of solution, you don't need to solve for the reactions unless it helps you. In this case, I can just look at the, the left side of this truss in equilibrium and solve for the forces without even worrying about the reactions. So that's the way I elected to do it. There are many different ways to skin a cat. Remember that. So I draw just the part to the left of my section cut, which leaves these members, specifically the members that I want to know, FBC, FCI, and FIJ. Okay, um, here I've drawn the relationship of this, the slope of this member FCI is one horizontal 2.4 vertical. I work out down here that that hypotenuse is 2.6 by taking the square root of the sum of the squares. So I now see I've kind of got my old good friend 5, 12, 13 triangle relationship. Okay, so question 7 was what's the force in member BC? Okay, that's this horizontal member up here on the top. And I'm looking for clever ways to solve this. Remember that the section I cut has to cut three and only three, generally, members of the truss. So I cut that section, cut three members. Now, because I've got three members cut, three unknowns, and I'm dealing with the equilibrium of a rigid body, I can take moments. And moments are often the, they should be generally the first uh, equation that you run on most rigid body trying to solve for reactions and so I cleverly solve for the sum of the moments about joint I which is right down here. That eliminates FCI and FIJ because they pass through member I, I mean joint I. It also eliminates this three kilonewton force up here because it passes through joint I. So my sum of the moments counterclockwise is positive is zero, so it's 
this 3 kilonewton force times its 2 meter distance to I plus this 3 kilonewton times its 1 meter distance to I shortest perpendicular distance minus the force in BC which is I've assumed positive tension in all these members kinda like joint I do up there for joints and its moment arm is 2.4 both of these are creating positive which is counterclockwise moments this 3 kilonewton this 3 kilonewton are both trying to rotate counterclockwise about point I FBC is trying to rotate clockwise so that's a negative moment so I get 3 times 2 plus 3 times 1 for the applied forces minus because it's clockwise FBC times its moment arm is 2.4 I do the simple multiplication, 6 plus 3 minus 2.4 FBC. Rearranging over here, I get FBC. I've got to keep real close track of my minus signs and positive signs, but that becomes positive on the other side of the equal sign. 6 plus 3 or 9 divided by 2.4 is 3.75 kilonewtons. It is positive, so it's tension. Number 8, what's the force in member F? I, what's the force in member IJ? I'm going to do a sum of moments again. Counterclockwise is positive. This time I want to sum moments about point C. C actually lies off of my uh, section. It lies over here. But I like it because FBC passes through it and FCI passes through it. Only the unknown that I'm trying to solve for, Fij, doesn't. So my sum of moments is zero. And the thing's creating moment about point C, which is right there off the, off the section even, is this 3 times 3 meters, 1, 2, 3. It's this 3 kilonewtons times 2 meters. This 3 kilonewtons times 1 meter. So I've written those down here, 3 times 3 plus 3 times 2 plus 3 times 1. They're all trying to cause counterclockwise or positive moment by my sign assumption about point C. And then, also, the, so the only unknown I have is the force in IJ, which is down here. It's also trying to rotate about point C in the counterclockwise direction. So it's positive, force in the IJ, times its 2.4 meter moment arm. I do the math, 9 plus 6 plus 3 plus 2.4 FIJ. I rearrange and I take all these and make them negative on the other side of the equal sign. Negative, 9 plus 6 plus 3 is negative 18, divided by 2.4 is equal to negative 7.5 kilonewtons so it's compression so I want to erase my negative sign or write it differently so I get 7.5 kilonewtons compression in member FIJ down here so if I was going to continue on I would reverse the sign of that arrow and I would show it pointing towards the joint my marker won't work and I would make it 7.5 my marker has died Qu finally question number 9 what's the force in member F in CI okay that's this diagonally sloping member remember I've assumed it in tension and I just want to use my sum of forces in the y direction positive up is equal to 0 and I just look at the whole thing as a, as a rigid body and I solve it I have all these three kilonewtons down, this one, this one, and this one, three of them, plus, because I've assumed tension up, the vertical component of that is 2.4 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 2.6 FCI. Rearranging, combining the terms, I get the force in CI is equal to 2.6 over 2.4 times these applied forces of 9 so that's equal to 9.75 kilonewtons tension.